What's going on, family? I'm Scrap of Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fistigov series. As I continue to study the weight divisions, I stumbled across a Cornishman by the name of Lynn Harvey, who is a fascinating fighter. Let's take a look at Lynn Harvey's career. He was born July 11th, 1907. He died November 28th, 1976 in London, England. He stood 5 foot 11 inches, weighed 137 to 184 pounds. Now that's quite a leap. He was managed by Dan Southern. He had a total bout career of 146 fights, 133 wins, and 13 losses. Now perhaps one of his most memorable bouts was on June 20th, 1942. He was in a ring with Freddie Mills, London, England. It was for the light heavyweight championship of Great Britain. Now let's talk about Lynn Harvey for one moment. As underrated as he was, he was that popular in London, England. Although, he was from Cornwell. That's exactly where Barford Simmons was originally from. What we learned about some fights that Lynn Harvey was involved in. But Freddie Mills was a light heavyweight champion he would take his title away from Gus Lesnar. And he would unfortunately be knocked out in three rounds by a black murderous row member named Lloyd Marshall. And Freddie Mills was said to have committed suicide. And you can read about Freddie Mills as there were some other things that was mentioned of him that I'd rather not go into because I really respected Freddie Mills, his ability to box. But Lynn Harvey would also be in the ring with John Henry Lewis. John Henry Lewis was the second black light heavyweight champion in boxing history. He would become light heavyweight champion in 1935 when he would defeat Bob Olin. And he would hang up his gloves in a light heavyweight division. When he would take on Joe Lewis in New York's Madison Square Garden, January of 1939. You see, he would lose vision in one eye. He needed the bread. So he would have a conversation with his good buddy, Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis would rather have given him the money. But the promoter, Mike Jacobs, said no way because he couldn't get a percentage of that gig. So he made a fight out of it. The fight took place in New York's Madison Square Garden. And unfortunately for John Henry Lewis, he would be stopped in one round. But he would laugh his way to the bank because he would wind up opening up a lot of apartments in Harlem, New York. But what happened to John Henry Lewis was a sad scenario. Now, he was supposed to defend one of his light heavyweight championship belts against Tiger Jack Fox. And a physician who would examine John Henry Lewis Noticed that he was poor sighted in one eye. So he would write a recommendation, the New York State Athletic Commission, stating that they, he did not feel that John Henry Lewis was fit to face Tiger Jack Fox. So the New York State Athletic Commission would strip John Henry Lewis of his title. And the reason why they stripped him was because he didn't defend his title against his number one contender, Tiger Jack Fox. But he couldn't defend it because they stripped him of his title. So with the other title he had left, he would face Al Gaynor. Faced him in Connecticut, and he would defeat him. But then he would give up the title. But John Henry Lewis was a fascinating light heavyweight champion. Then Harvey would also take on Larry Gans. Larry Gans would be the British Empire heavyweight champion. And then Harvey would defeat Larry Gans. Very close and controversial fight. He would also take on Marcel Theo. Marcel Theo was the NBA and IBU middleweight champion. Marcel Theo would take his crown from William Gorilla Jones. 
And he would become the brand new NBA middleweight champion. Lynn Harvey would also take on Dave Shade. Dave Shade was out of California. He had a brilliant fight in Buffalo, New York with Jimmy Slattery. Oh, what a fight that was. Shade would also be in the ring with Mickey Walker and many others. But Lynn Harvey would also be in the ring with Jack Hood and Jack McAvoy. But on April 29, 1926, he would take on Harry Mason, 20-round draw for the British Boxing Board of Control. It was a welterweight championship of Great Britain. 1929, he would take on Alex Island, London, England. He would knock him out in seven rounds. It was a middleweight championship of the British Empire, Commonwealth, British Boxing Board of Control. Middleweight championship of Great Britain and Commonwealth. 1939, take on Jack McAvoy. Middleweight Championship of the British Empire Commonwealth, British Boxing Border Control. November 30th, he would take on Jack Peterson, London, England. The British Boxing Border Control Heavyweight Championship. Be at the Royal Albert Park Hall in London, England. January 3rd, he would take on a fighter by the name of Lynn Johnson. 20 rounds, and he would lose. To Lynn Johnson. Let's talk about Lynn Johnson for one moment. Now, Lynn Johnson, London, England, couldn't get a shot at a title in any weight division. Why? Because of the rule of 24. Any fighter who had a parent with one ounce of black blood in their body, was not allowed to fight for a championship. What does that mean? If Lynn Johnson had a white mother, black father, black mother, white father, who was not allowed to fight for a championship, and that was the case with Lynn Johnson. Lynn Johnson was a black fighter, but he was fascinating. Had well over 137 fights. Lost his seven fights. And he had to go over to Australia for a title shot. And he would become a champion of the British Empire Middleweight Championship. And I chuckled because he had to go to a different country to win a title that was represented in his own country. But he couldn't win it from his own country. Had to go someplace else. Meanwhile, Mickey Walker, who was the world middleweight champion at that time, had a clause in his contract that should he become champion, welterweight or middleweight, which he was both, he would not defend his title against a black fighter. So he told Len Harvey's manager, if Len Harvey would defeat Tommy Milligan, he would get a shot, knowing that Len Harvey would never get a shot at Tommy Milken. And that was his way out. Tommy Milliken was from Scotland. He got a shot at Mickey Walker. Mickey Walker would knock him out. But Lynn Johnson and his own country would never be allowed to get a shot. Tommy Milliken from Scotland got one. Tommy Milliken should have got a shot. But so should Lynn Johnson. Lynn Johnson got tired of the foolishness. And he wanted to get on the board. They kept rejecting him from getting on the board. British Boxing Board of Control. And for six years, he kept protesting. And he would finally change those rules. Had it not been for Lynn Johnson, Fighters such as Anthony Joshua, Frank Bruno, Nigel Bent, and many others would have never gotten a shot at a title. Lynn Johnson was a fascinating fighter. I've mentioned it before. She had three black fighters in the top five when Mickey Walker was middleweight champion. Yeah, William Gorilla Jones. Harry Smith, who was the Harlem Thunderbolt, he was totally rejected. And Lynn Johnson, 
from London. What a fighter he was. He would take on Len Harvey. He would defeat him in 20 rounds. But he would lose to him towards the end of his career. Shout out to Lynn Johnson. February 8th, 1934. Larry Gans would take on Lynn Harvey. Larry Gans was the British Empire heavyweight champion. Fought him in London, England. It was for his championship, the British Empire, the Commonwealth, at the Albert Hall. And he would lose a very controversial decision with Larry Gans. He would lose his title. Lynn Harvey would also take on Vince Dundee, New York's Madison Square Garden, fought him twice, February 13th, 1931, January 9th, 1931. And he would take on Ben Jappy, March 20th, 1931, New York's Madison Square Garden. He would lose to him in 12 rounds. Both men were champions. Let's take a look at a fight of Lynn Harvey. Like I said, it's very underrated. But he was a brilliant fighter. The sensational Harvey Mills fight packs Tottenham Football Ground for the world's Empire and British Light Heavyweight Championship. Pilot officer Len Harvey, the holder, is scheduled to defend his titles in a 15-round contest with the 22-year-old Bournemouth challenger, Sergeant Freddie Mills, also of the RAF. When the introduction's over, more than 30,000 spectators settle down in anticipation of a strongly fought slogging match. In the first round, Harvey mixes punches, but most of the exchanges are at close quarters. One or two blows begin to creep around the back of Harvey's neck, but in the main, round one is just a lot of infighting with both men adding up points. Harvey is 13 years older than young Mills, and it's just possible that those years are beginning to tell. Harvey entered the ring with a proud record of never having been knocked out in a fight. And that's the end of round one. In a few seconds now, Harvey will come out of his corner for the Mills bomb finish. comes in like a bull at a championship. Before Harvey can get set, Mills sends in a left hook to the chin and drops Harvey for a count of nine. In the next few seconds, Harvey, who's in the next few seconds, Harvey, whose defense was probably the finest in the world, is nothing more than a punch bag for Mills. Mills has him on the ropes and is sending in a fusillade of lefts and rights to a fading champion. One more shattering punch and away goes Harvey through the ropes and headlong out of the ring. heavyweight champion is giving away nearly three stone in weight to Larry Gaines, champion of the British Empire, in his challenge for the Empire title. The coloured Canadian also has the advantage in height and reach, but Harvey knows his stuff and this is likely to be a battle of wits. Nothing much happens in the first round, but in the second Gaines gets the challenger bending over the ropes and lands one or two telling ones at close range. After that, they settle down to the holding game, Harvey's well-known method that he used successfully in the early rounds of the Peterson fight. Harvey goes down in the second round, but it's only a slip. The first few rounds are very dull stuff, all holding and no hitting. The only bright flash comes in a quick exchange when Harvey gets caught off his balance. Round eight. Things are a little bit more lively, but little Jim Kendrick, the referee, seems to be doing all the work. Harvey slips again, but he's up before you notice it. Harvey's nose is bleeding. Nine and ten pass off uneventfully. Again, more holding than hitting. 
I'm scrapbook boxing museum of the forgotten fist took off series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. You've been watching Lynn Harvey. And I don't wonder. I've seen rougher stuff in As I go through the weight divisions, Lynn Harvey would take the British Empire heavyweight championship belt from Larry Gans. Very controversial victory for Lynn Harvey. But that's boxing. Thanks for watching. Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff series. Occasional flashes from Len or Larry show they realize it's getting near the gun, but the odds are slightly in favor of the Cornishman. Another title is changing hands. indicates the winner and Len Harvey is now the holder of three championships, British heavyweight, light heavyweight and British Empire heavyweight.